Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Aces High, and today I'm bringing you guys some more World War I from Epic History TV. First off, gotta thank the channel. I love Epic History TV, and I appreciate you letting me use your videos. If you're seeing this, seriously, man, I appreciate all of you, the whole team that puts together your videos. Um, that being said, if you guys haven't subbed to my channel, hit that sub button, ring the bell, because I put out videos every day, and I'd appreciate it. Seriously, it makes me feel good. And uh, I leave me a comment. I love reading your comments, and I try to reply to every single one. And let me know what you guys want to watch. I have a long list of stuff that, uh, that you guys have requested, and I'm putting together a calendar, trying to work it out as much as I can. Everything from the Ottoman Empire to Alexander the Great, all the way to Queen Elizabeth II's coronation. I'm working on it, I promise. Uh, that being said, uh, since we're working through this World War I series, uh, I've already released a video on 1914, 1915, 1916, and 1917. Uh, today's video is going to be 1918. So where we left off is Russia kind of stood back. France is uh, trying to fix their army. Great Britain is doing their strong army type thing, <laughs> holding the line. And uh, the Eastern Front kind of has fallen apart and just kind of uh, held in one spot, you know. Uh, but America is now in the war. Uh, they, they've declared war and, uh, they're on their way. So we're going to see how this changes the battle. It is, uh, it's going to be a lot of troops. Uh, that being said, I'm going to sit back. I'll shut up. Let's just get started. Nineteen eighteen. After three and a half years of war, the Allies are in crisis. Russia has been rocked by revolution and its new Bolshevik government has signed an armistice with the Central Powers. Thousands of German yeah. troops will be freed up to fight on the Western Front, where the carnage of trench warfare has already claimed more than a million lives. I've got a question for you guys. How long does it take at this point in history to get across the Atlantic Ocean? So like, if you load up all your troops and you're sending them across, is it still like a month or something? I mean, I know way back in the day with like Christopher Columbus and everything, it took like three months to get across it. But that was also different. It was wooden ships, it was sails, things like that. Um, so, I mean, what do we got now, you know? Let me know. If, if you guys know. Uh, a month, three weeks. I'd be surprised if it was only like a week or something. That seems kind of quick. But Germany is also desperate. Britain's long naval blockade has led to shortages and social unrest at home. While America's entry into the war brings fresh manpower and vast resources to the Allied cause, Germany faces inevitable defeat unless it can win a quick victory on the Western Front. Okay. The Kaiser's Battle. U.S. President Wilson announces his 14 points. They outline his vision for a post-war world, including an end to secret treaties, a reduction in the size of armed forces, self-determination for the people of the Austro-Hungarian... No more secret treaties, free navigation of the seas. Okay, I can have there. Ooh, the reduction of armed forces. That was one of the parts that kind of led to World War II. Um, also, how much they had to pay back. Um, let's see. self determination Korean Empire. And an international organization. Really? The Turkish Empire to be dismantled? Oh my god. That's harsh. Wow. And Poland again? Oh my god. Russia agrees with adding Poland at this point? A Polish state? That's interesting. I didn't think that Russia would be on board with that. A general association of nations. Isn't that uh, what they call it? It wasn't uh, the United Nations. That was World War II. It was uh, the League of Nations, right? After World War One, isn't that uh, that what this basically is—the General Association of Nations, or whatever? Uh, they, I think they called it the League of Nations. I think that's what they're talking about. Um, yeah. Okay. Wow. That's that's a lot. To settle future disputes, but most European leaders dismiss his ideas 
as wishful thinking. At Brest-Litovsk, Bolshevik Russia signs a peace treaty with the Central Powers. Russia gives up vast amounts of territory in exchange for peace. Wow. Half a million German troops can now be redeployed from the east to the Western Front, where German General Erich Ludendorff plans an all-out, last-ditch offensive to win the war. Ludendorff's spring offensive catches the Allies off guard. German stormtroopers, using new infiltration tactics, help to overwhelm the British Fifth Army, which is soon in full retreat. The German advance threatens to split the British and French armies with disaster. What made them stormtroopers? I mean, was that just the name that they gave their troops at the time, or was that a specific type of German troop? Disastrous consequences. So French General Ferdinand Foch jokes. is appointed Supreme Commander of Allied Forces to coordinate strategy. Outside Amiens, British and Australian troops improvise a defence and finally halt the German advance. The German offensive switches to the north, targeting the channel ports. But the British inflict heavy losses on the Germans and prevent a breakthrough. Above the trenches, the first air war continues to escalate. Each side now has more than 3,000 aircraft in service on the Western Front. But by 1918, the Allies have won air superiority, thanks to greater resources. On the 21st of April, Germany's most famous pilot, Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron, is shot down and killed near Amiens. Wow. With 80 victories, he's the war's highest scoring ace. One thing that I do know about the Red Baron, I don't know too much about him, but uh, planes have always intrigued me. I actually uh, work for a, uh, a company that, that uh, I guess I can't say company names, so a company that builds aircraft, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and uh, planes have just always intrigued me. Um, the Red Baron, though, uh, a lot, I, I know that a lot of people kind of think, oh, why, why was this plane red, things like that, you know, why were the tails red, all that. Um, and when he was asked about that, when they were asked about that, it was so that the enemy could see them from farther away. And I know you're thinking, why would that be? And it was specifically because he wanted a fair fight. He didn't want to have to sneak up on them. He wanted them to know he's coming. And oftentimes, it, just his reputation would make the enemies turn around and flee. It's just crazy, you know? And is buried by the Allies with full military honors. Britain's new independent bombing force launches a daylight raid against Cologne. Look at those bombs. It marks the beginning of Britain's own strategic bombing campaign. On the ground, Ludendorff's offensive switches south, targeting the French. German troops advance 30 miles, but are halted wow. at the River Marne, just as fresh American divisions enter the line. Okay. The U.S. 1st Division is the first to see combat at the Battle of Contigny. Three days later, the U.S. 2nd Division wins victory at the Battle of Belleau Wood. By now, there are nearly a million American soldiers in France, with 10,000 more arriving every whoa, whoa, day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. American soldiers? These, I mean, these are black guys, aren't they? I didn't think that we had any black soldiers in World War I. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought it wasn't until uh, World War II that we had black soldiers. I guess we did in, in the American Civil War, which was before that. Maybe it was World War II was the first time that we had pilots that were black. Uh, I guess that makes sense. It's, uh, it's just such a interesting part of American history because, I mean, they didn't even have the right to vote at the time, yet, yet they could fight for their country. I mean... 
come on, man. I, I come from a, a, a African American an ancestry. My grandpa's full black. My dad's half black. Uh, I may look a little, I may look a little light, but I am a quarter black. Um, and, uh, it's just, it's an incredible, incredible history. I've been to the National Civil Rights Museum down in Memphis, Tennessee, um, where, uh, Martin Luther King, the Reverend was, uh, was assassinated. And, uh, just, it's, it's an incredible history, but, uh, I guess that doesn't surprise me because we did have some black soldiers in uh, in the Civil War, which was way before this. I guess it was just pilots at World War II. Huh. The fourth phase of the German offensive leads to a nine-mile advance, but is finally halted by a French counterattack. In Italy, Austria-Hungary launches an attack at Asiago and the Piave River to support Ludendorff's offensive in France. But it's repulsed with heavy losses, and morale amongst the Austro-Hungarian army collapses. Oh, wow. British and French troops land at Murmansk in northern Russia. It's the beginning of Allied intervention in Russia's civil war, on the side of so-called white, or anti-Bolshevik forces. On the Western Front, the Germans' final attack is defeated in the Second Battle of the Marne. Ludendorff's offensive has cost the Germans more than 600,000 casualties and has failed to make a decisive breakthrough. Germany's final gamble has failed. It's not looking so good. In all reality, like, I don't want to take credit as an American, but uh, it really did help to have all those extra troops and, more importantly, fresh troops that weren't uh, so battle-worn on the battlefield. The Allies now go on the attack. At the Battle of Amiens, British, Australian, Canadian and French troops, oh, supported Australians. by tanks and aircraft, advanced seven miles in a single day. General Ludendorff calls the 8th of August the Black Day of the German Army. German troops are exhausted, hungry and demoralized, and begin to surrender in their thousands. The Battle of Amiens begins the Allies' Hundred Days Offensive. Trench warfare is over. The Germans are in full retreat. In the Balkans, a new Allied offensive at Dobropolje breaks through Bulgarian positions. The overstretched Bulgarian army collapses, and two weeks later, Bulgaria signs an armistice. Wow. In the Middle East, British-led forces defeat the Turks at the Battle of Megiddo, taking 25,000 prisoners. Allied troops soon occupy Damascus and Aleppo. Wow, they're pushing way up there. On the Western Front, Marshal Foch orders a general attack. British, French and American armies reach the Hindenburg Line, a line of reinforced German defences, and break through. Wow. Wow, they took so much. Ludendorff informs the Kaiser that the military situation is hopeless and that Germany must seek an armistice. Yeah. Germany sends a request to US President Woodrow Wilson, who in return demands German withdrawal from all occupied territory and the Kaiser's abdication. On the Italian front, the Allies deliver the final blow to Austria-Hungary at the Battle of Vittorio Veneto. The Austro-Hungarian army disintegrates and 300,000 prisoners are taken. Wow. With the Central Powers facing collapse, the Ottoman Empire signs an armistice with the Allies at Mudros. Four days later, Austria-Hungary signs an armistice with the Allies 
at Villa Giusti. Oh, it's all over. At Kiel, the German High Seas Fleet is ordered to make a suicidal attack on the British Navy. But instead, it mutinies. Revolution spreads through Germany. Really? The Kaiser abdicates. And a German Republic is proclaimed. On the 11th of November 1918, a German delegation signs an armistice with the Allies inside Marshal Foch's railway carriage at Compiègne. It comes into force at 11 a.m., but fighting continues until the last moment. American Private Henry Gunter is killed, charging a German machine gun at 10.59. He is thought to be the last soldier killed during World War I. Wow, could you imagine that? Do you imagine uh, if you had just waited 30 more seconds or something like that, you uh, you might have lived through the war? I mean, don't get me wrong, he died a heroic, brave death, uh, but just to be that close, you know? And I mean, you never know how, how close or how far away it is, but, uh, wow. I just realized something. I feel bad that I didn't know this. Um, November 11th, 1918. So that's when he died. That was actually the last day of the war uh, in America in November. And it might be elsewhere. I'm not sure. I think it's just America, uh, or at least I'm sure it's in several countries. But uh, that's our Veterans Day, uh, where we remember all veterans from uh, current and past wars and uh, anybody who's really served in our military. Um, yeah, it's just interesting. I didn't realize it was based off the end of World War One. Three days later, in East Africa, German General von Lettow Vorbeck surrenders his army on the Chambezi River. For four years, he has tied down huge numbers of Allied troops, remaining undefeated while cut off from home. He is still considered one of history's greatest guerrilla leaders. <laughs> Oh, is this just roll into 1919 a little bit? The Paris Peace Conference opens at the Palace of Versailles, just outside the French capital. Hang on, uh, what about uh, Geneva? Wasn't Geneva after World War One, or am I wrong in that? Is it World War Two? I don't, I, I didn't think so, but uh, delegate. I mean, obviously, obviously not. I, I knew of the Paris Peace Conference. Um, yeah. I don't know, I guess I'll just keep on watching. Let's accept a proposal to create a League of Nations to settle yeah, future international nations. disputes. The Versailles Treaty, signed in June, imposes harsh terms on Germany. It's See, and it's because... I, I, one thing I do know about World War II is that's a huge reason for World War II as well, is uh, Germany was hit so hard. They owed so much money, it killed their economy. They lost all land, they were war-torn, just all kinds of stuff. It hit them so hard after World War One that a lot of people were looking for any type of a follower, anybody that they could follow that promised them, you know, the promised land, basically. And, uh, and Adolf Hitler turned around and he said, hey, basically he said, hey, we can do better. We are strong. We don't deserve this. And... Uh, he got a lot of people on his side and gained popularity because of what happened after World War I. Military is restricted in size. It must pay war reparations to the Allies. Oh yeah, and Germany can't have a It soldier. loses yeah, territory to right. its neighbors. Wow, it lost that much. And its colonies are seized by the victors. Wow, that's huge. Germany must also accept responsibility for the war in a war guilt clause, a source of lasting resentment in Germany. Germany accepts responsibility for causing all damage and destruction to which the Allied and associated governments have been subjected uh, as a consequence of the war imposed upon them by the aggression of Germany and her allies. Why is it just Germany that's really being hit so hard? What about Austria-Hungary? I mean, weren't they the first ones to really spark the war? It just doesn't make sense. And the Ottoman Empire. The boundaries of Europe are redrawn. Poland re-emerges after a hundred years of foreign rule, while Austria, Hungary, 
Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, and... Wow, Hungary was re uh, reduced just to that? I mean, they used to be... I'm thinking back in, like, Napoleonic times, they were a huge, huge empire. And an enlarged Romania emerged from the ashes of the wow. Austro-Hungarian Empire. The Ottoman Empire is dismantled. New states, most under European control, are created in the Middle East. Here... See, that, I think, is the hardest part. Is uh, They were such a strong, strong empire. And, uh, I mean, again, I thought that they used to control land, like, all over here in Northern Africa as well. Um, I guess I'll learn more about them when I watch their series, but they're just gone. As in Europe, the seeds of future conflict are sown. So I guess I take it back. Germany may have been hit with all that money and everything and army reduction stuff, but the Ottoman Empire really got it bad, and so did uh, the Austrians. While in the Far East, wow. former German possessions in China are handed to Japan, to China's outrage. World War I claimed the lives of nine and a half million soldiers. Wow. One in eight of those who fought. Wow. 21 million 4 .5%. more were wounded. Seven million civilians also lost their lives. Huge areas of Europe were left devastated. Yeah. Old empires vanished. New states were born. Lives across the world were transformed. Here's the crazy part. It's 1918. Do you imagine uh, about 30 years later? Or not even that, 20 years later? Um, I mean, you're finally getting to the point where Europe's being rebuilt. And, uh, and then they get into the Second World War. Something that they never thought would happen again. I mean, there's a reason they called it the Great War after World War I. Because they said there can never be another war like this. It was just the biggest war and just... Wow. The I world was never the same again. Yeah, I agree. Wow. All right, you guys, let's uh, let's have a chat about that. Uh, yeah, that's it. For some reason, I was thinking there was still one more episode, but uh, I guess it was a five-part series. Um, if there is one more episode, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out uh, just to double check. So don't quote me on that. If there is one, I promise I'll watch it. But uh, the war's over. It's uh, it's an incredible just beating to uh, to the three powers that lost. You know, the Ottoman Empire is gone, just completely gone. Uh, the Austrian uh, Hungarian Empire is reduced to almost nothing compared to their former glory, especially considering or compared to them before. The Napoleonic Wars. I mean, think about how big of an empire it was then. And that was only 110 years ago. Something like that. It's, uh, it's incredible in just short, it's such a short amount of time. Um, and then Germany, they just, they were beat back so much and just destroyed to the point that it led to a lot of things that ended up leading to World War II. It just, it was a horrible war. It really was. I, uh, I learned a lot, actually, um, and I'm really glad that you guys suggested it. Uh, I think I'm going to, if there's not one more episode, which I don't think there is, I'm actually going to, over the next couple of days, be watching a couple small ones, like possibly The Queen's Coronation, and just a couple of other small single video series, or not even series, just single videos, before I hop into either Alexander the Great or the Ottoman Empire. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I love y'all. This is Ace Asai, and I'm out.